If you want to really understand modern economics, to look at its very foundations, then you need to understand indifference curves. Indifference curves are particularly important in economics as they provide us with a framework within which we can examine how people make choices. How they make choices to maximise their own satisfaction, happiness or what economists call utility. So in this video we're going to cover the following. Firstly, we'll look at the concept or idea of indifference. What does it mean to be indifferent? What do economists mean by indifference? Secondly, we'll use a practical example to plot a simple indifference curve. And we'll also discuss the five key features of indifference curves that you need to remember. Thirdly, we'll look at four key assumptions that underlie all indifference curves. And finally, at the end, we'll also have a quick summary of everything we've covered. If we're going to understand indifference curves, we need to start by understanding what economists actually mean when they say someone is indifferent. What does it actually mean to be indifferent? In simple terms, it means that you have no preference between a number of choices or options presented to you. Or put more simply, you really don't care or mind which option you end up with. Let's use an example. Imagine I said I'd give you a cake for free and offered you these four options. Which one would you choose? Well, in this situation, as all the cakes are the same, I'm guessing you'd have no preference. You would probably just choose one of them at random. This means you are indifferent between cakes one, two, three and four. You have no preference. This is because whichever cake you choose, eating it would give you the same level of satisfaction or utility. Therefore economists say you are indifferent between two goods when they both provide you with equal utility. Let's now look at an example where you are choosing between two different items. Imagine choosing between eating at either McDonald's or Starbucks. Some people like McDonald's more, some people like Starbucks more. In our example, we'll assume that our consumer is planning to make 10 visits to McDonald's and 10 visits to Starbucks. Now imagine that we asked our consumer to give up five of their visits to McDonald's and ask them how many extra visits to Starbucks they would need to make to ensure their happiness or utility remained unchanged. If this is seven visits, then we can say our consumer is in difference between either A, 10 visits to McDonald's and 10 to Starbucks, or B, five visits to McDonald's and 17 visits to Starbucks. By asking our consumer more questions like this, we could find a whole series of combinations where they are indifferent, as illustrated in the table. It is these points that we can plot on a graph, producing an indifference curve. A curve that shows all the combinations of the two goods between which the consumer is indifferent and provides them with the same level of utility. We now have our indifference curve and there are five important things we need to note. Firstly, everyone has a different indifference curve. This one here is the one that represents and is built upon the preferences of our example consumer. Your curve will undoubtedly be different and could be like this or like this. How it looks will depend on your natural preference between McDonald's and Starbucks. Secondly, the curve always slopes down from left to right. This is because we always assume that more of something is better than less. So if you're asking people to give something up, then they need to be compensated with more of something else to keep their utility constant. Or in our example, if they're being asked to sacrifice visits to McDonald's, they will need more visits to Starbucks. Thirdly, note that the curve is convex. It bends inward. It's not straight or concave, bending outwards. That's because we are all assumed to have what economists call a declining marginal utility. The more we consume of something, the less pleasure we get from each individual item we consume. Our first visit to Starbucks may be great, 
but it's pretty fair to say that we get less pleasure from our 30th visit than we did from our first one. Fourth, the curves can never cross. We define each curve as representing a constant level of utility. As each curve is for a different level of utility, they cannot, by definition, cross each other. Fifth, the further out the curve is from the origin of the graph, the higher level of utility or satisfaction. That's because the further away you are, the more goods you have, or in our case, more visits to Starbucks or McDonald's. More goods to consumers mean greater pleasure or utility. We have now built our indifference curve and have noted some of its key characteristics. Let's now look at a number of assumptions that economists make when using indifference curves. Firstly, they assume that people are rational and will always choose to maximise their own pleasure or utility. Secondly, they assume that it is possible to rank items in order of preference, that people can actually choose and place them in an order. Thirdly, they assume that people make consistent choices. For example, if today they prefer apples to oranges, they will tomorrow. Fourth, economists assume that preferences are transitive. In simple terms, this means that if you prefer apples to oranges and also prefer oranges to bananas, then you must, by definition, prefer apples to bananas. Indifference curves are a very powerful and useful way of analysing consumer choice. However, it's important to remember that they are built upon a number of assumptions about how people behave. In this short video, we have seen that economists have a concept of indifference and that consumers are said to be indifferent between two options when they expect both to provide the same level of satisfaction or utility. This indifference relationship is often represented on a graph where the trade-off between two different goods is shown. The curve represents all the different combinations of goods where the utility of the consumer is the same. By plotting these points, we also noted a number of key features of indifference curves, namely that everyone will have a different indifference curve reflecting their different preferences, that the curve will always slope down from left to right, that the curve will be convex, reflecting the declining marginal utility of goods, that the curves will never cross, and that the curves further away from the origin of the graph represent a higher level of utility for the consumer. We also briefly discussed a number of core assumptions that underlie indifference curves, assumptions broadly about the way consumers behave. We assume they can make choices and that they do this in a rational way and consistent way. I hope you have found this video useful. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.